So welcome to the Sports Roll Podcast. I have Justin Jones, Tirith Brumvit, and Matt Dangler with me, and we're going to be discussing the NBA. And let's get started with what happened in the game against OKC and uh, Golden State at Oklahoma. Matt, did you see the game, and what did you think of it? I did watch it. I could not believe the shot Steph hit to win. I thought that the Thunder were going to take it, but Steph had other plans. Yeah, and Justin, did you... Did you enjoy the game at all? No. <laughs> Let's be clear. The Thunder blew that game. That, yeah. that was nothing Nothing the Warriors did won that game. Yeah. It was all the Thunder blowing. <laughs> so, Pierre, obviously you're laughing at it, so I think you realize that it's ludicrous what he's saying, right? It is ludicrous. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure I would go that far. Just because the Thunder, I mean, not the Thunder, the Warriors have been pulling these kinds of games out of their butt, like, for the past, like, you know, year and a half on this pretty historic run, like... A lot of times when it looks like they're about to lose and they make a lot of mistakes, they build themselves out with a lot of crazy tough shots and a little bit of luck, but, you know, that was, it. like you said, a pretty tough shot that Steph hit at the end, so it goes with the trend. And so Kevin Durant at the end of the game had this weird kind of uh, sequence where he fouled uh, Iguodala, so Iguodala hits the two free throws, which was a God's miracle, by the way. <laughs> like a 60% Iguodala hitting two straight free throws. But as, as that happened in the uh, overtime period, he also fouled out immediately. So that, you know, that left Oklahoma City without one of their superstars. So Matt, what did you make of that loss for OKC? Was, it, was that the nail in the coffin? I'd say... To some degree, yes, because even before Durant fouled Iguodala in the last play of regular time, he threw the ball away, and right. and then he he should not. You don't foul a long two uh, to tie the game. And Iguodala, it's just there's no there's no need to do that. And I, I feel like him fouling on overtime kind of did end any chances of a of a real win because as as good as Westbrook is, he couldn't he couldn't quite shoulder the load of the entire Thunder scoring output and. The last five minutes, I, I think that yeah, I agree. Were you impressed with Westbrook, at all? No. <laughs> Were you impressed with anybody? In this uh, he game? didn't have a good day. No. <laughs> <laughs> what? And it, what? What did you mean when you said the nail in the coffin? Nail in the coffin is like they lose KD, but they only have Russ now. No, no, I know. So you're saying nail in the coffin for that game, right? Right. Not no, the I season. thought you meant for their season. No, I was no. like, geez, that'd be dude. terrible. <laughs> them yeah. losing one game doesn't like take them out of everything, but they lost Durant after the game was tied. Oh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. there's a sequence where he had worked so hard to like build up the 50 point night that he had, um, and then all those rebounds and assists and everything, and then all of a sudden in like two or three minutes, that entire progress just goes away. So did you notice that? And then, like, with Westbrook, was that, like, did you even like Westbrook's performance at that point? I mean, they, when Durant went out, I think everyone knew they were going to lose. I mean, I mean, they, they played pretty decent with him out, though, um, which kind of speaks to the fact that the sets they run and stuff, um, you know, they don't really utilize all the talent they have if they can perform the same um, or close to the same with their best player out of the lineup. So, I don't know. Yeah. And Tirith, is there anything that we can take away from OKC's performance? Is the season done? Or, like, where are they going to be? <laughs> no, I mean, the season's not done, of course, but I yeah. think that game shows that, you know, there's more evidence for the theory that Billy Donovan isn't a technical genius or he doesn't know how to play chess or he's probably playing checkers while everyone else is playing chess. <laughs> and, um, you know, if he has to face like Greg Popovich or like Steve Kerr in the playoffs, he's probably not going to make the right calls in terms of end of game, like sets both on offense and defense, which the offense thing has been a problem for a while, but the defense thing, you know, they've got, like you guys said, like good talented guys who could probably be decent defenders, but they don't have any kind of way to utilize all that length and, uh, you know, speed. So it's kind of pathetic, but yeah. And think, also, yeah, go ahead. Oh, uh, I was going to say, I think we've talked a lot about the Thunder and how they kind of blew the game, but we also should talk about the Warriors. They stayed strong, and they didn't have their best game. And I feel like you almost have to play a perfect game to beat the Warriors, and that's why they're such a dangerous team in the playoffs, because over over a, one game, you know, they might they might lose occasionally, but when you have to beat them in a best-of-seven series, it's it just doesn't... It's really, really difficult to outplay them in that many consecutive nights, especially when games are at home in Oracle for them. I just, I don't see anyone standing in their way again. Yeah, and tonight the Warriors and the Thunder play at 10.30 today at TNT. So do you guys at least expect OKC to contend? And if they do contend, because these games are tend to be really close and high scoring, so they turn into shootouts ostensibly. So do you think it's going to be a close game given that they had the 
the bad loss at Clippers last night? I don't think so. I think the Warriors will blow them out. Yeah, but then also Steph Curry is listed as questionable with the ankle injury. So if Steph is out, do you think OKC is going to capitalize on that and maybe try to win for once? I don't think they will. Yeah. I mean, they're not... Even if he doesn't play, I don't see them winning there. Okay. Or maybe even flip the question for you, Raj. Like, yeah. Do you think that after some of these losses and the way OKC's played because they're playing really well for a stretch and then now you know the schedule's gotten tougher, they haven't played their best, or maybe this is just what they are, but do you think they're still a contender in the same breath as like Cleveland, like Golden State, and San Antonio? Yeah, so I'll go back to what I said earlier, like two, three months ago, is that the Clippers are, I still think, they're the best team to face off against uh, Golden State, mostly because when they get Blake back, they can uh, defensively match up pretty well, I think. And sure, like Blake doesn't always play the best defense you would want. And like DeAndre tries to grab more rebounds than he has blocks. And like they have to get motivated. And last night you saw that without Blake, DeAndre and Chris Paul single handedly carried the team, as well as Wesley Johnson hitting like three three pointers and getting five steals all of a sudden. So if all the bench guys are on rhythm, which the Clippers have one of the deepest benches in the league. I think that sets them up to basically succeed against the Golden State, whereas I think the Spurs, we've seen plenty of series where uh, the Spurs are supposed to win and then they just end up crashing out. And it, it's not even a good team half the time. Like with the Clippers last year, they won, but then they had to, uh, the Spurs ended up losing that series, but the Clippers won it. And so I think... The Clippers were pretty good though last year. I wouldn't say were they good. weren't a bad team. I mean, no, no, no I'm not saying really they were bad, but like... The Spurs were, any, were the sixth seed. Yeah, but they were a way better team than the six seed. They they were yeah. they were yeah, the best six true. seed that they could have had last year. I, I would right. I would say more to your point about Blake. Like I mean, Blake last season in the playoffs played like literally you know like LeBron level ball. Like he especially did. in that first series, like he was averaging like twenty like five like eight and six. Like, yeah, he was, he was pretty insane. Right. It's crazy. Also, yeah. the entire Clippers series could have been flipped the opposite way. I don't know if you remember the end of the series, but. There was that yeah. debacle with the clock. Yeah. It was a coin flip, essentially. Yeah. 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 So we have uh, the, that game going on tonight. And then also in the staying with the Western Conference, you also have San Antonio, who has uh, the Pelicans on the slate tonight. So <laughs> we all know that's not going to work out too well for the Pelicans. But do you see, uh, what do you make of Anthony Davis' season so far? Because, Tirith, I know you rate him pretty highly as a Chicago native. And AD being part of <laughs> not, he no, said, no, not, 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 not considering the fact that he's really good, just because just, just he's from yeah. Chicago. You know, he's terrible. Terrible. Yeah. <laughs> no, but um, he, he has a huge, uh, all these like bonuses kick in if he does really well this yeah. season. So is it safe to say that all the New Orleans guys should just be like, we're going to get our assist numbers and just pass it to AD and let him do all the work? So he gets more of those 59-point, 29-rebound nights? <laughs> I, I'm more... I think, for one, I'll first say, I think he's one of the most talented players in the NBA. And if he can stay healthy on a consecutive basis and get into an offensive set that seems to actually work for him, because I don't think the Pelicans use him to their full to his full uh, talent level. Right. But if, they were, if I were the coach, I would give him the ball as much as humanly possible. Kind of, he's the best player on the team. There's no really better option there. Their season's done. You... You, he wants the bonuses. Let him let him feast on teams. He's a size matchup. He can shoot. I just don't. I don't see any reason why he wouldn't be getting the ball. I think to to that point, I don't think like even if you watch like last year when New Orleans was like doing like you know well, especially compared you know to this year when they got the eight seed and stuff. Like they would have Drew Holiday or Tyreek Evans bring up the ball and then get into a set that would like feature like AD you know using some kind of cut or getting open or posting up mm-hmm. or whatever maybe. But even then, like a lot of the problem I think this year is that their guards have been hurt or they just suck. Like they're they're they're, st- they're starting guys yes. who like essentially are like D league players, like right. as their backcourt. Bryce Dejon Jones, or yeah, like like, like like who are these people, right? And so <laughs> it's like that was the type of <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. Could we ever tell the difference? But yeah. it's like uh, given that, I think what they should switch to is more of what Minnesota used to do with Kevin Love when he was their best player a couple years ago, and then also like kind of what the Clippers did with Blake last season in the playoffs when they started to play better is have AB kind of get the ball at the top of the key and make the decision to be able to pass. He's a really good passer. You don't see it a lot because he doesn't have the ball in his hands. And, like, Drew Holiday, especially Tyreek, can at times be, especially Tyreek, be a black hole where, you know, they'll get into tunnel vision kind of mode and drive and miss, and AD will have to finish up around the rim to, like, make up for that. Yeah. And, Justin, you followed the Detroit Pistons. Have you gone to a game this year? 
Yes. Yeah. Yeah, right which one? Pistons Cavs. How did you enjoy that game? Did it end well for the Pistons at least? It did not. <laughs> <laughs> they lost by like 15, I think. Oh, that's it, good. It wasn't that close. Okay. <laughs> but yeah. they did end up getting Tobias Harris, who Matt and I both love, and I know Tirith also loves. But are you happy as a pseudo-Pistons fan because you live in Michigan now? Are you happy with the Tobias Harris deal? Sure. I mean, sure. they'll... they'll <laughs> Doesn't sound too happy, but okay. <laughs> I mean, they'll probably get, you know, first round or second round of the playoffs, and then, yeah. you know, lose to one of the good teams, so... yeah. They do have such a good base to build on now, though. I mean, Reggie Jackson's very solid. Andre Drummond, Tobias Harris, Stanley Johnson. These are very, very good players that have the potential to be great, especially Drummond, in my opinion. And Harris is really raw, but he could he could be a really, really solid scorer on that team and potentially lead them to be a real consistent playoff team with the potential to make deeper runs. Remember when Otis Smith got rid of SVG to keep Dwight happy and then eventually <laughs> trade him a year later? Yeah. Yeah, not so sure it's a good move now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the other alternative is you have uh, Joe Dubarge picking up two posts. <laughs> 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 you remember that picture? Yeah. 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 So I'm glad, you know, for what team it's worked out. And with SVG, Tirith, what has impressed you the most with the revolution of sorts that he's had in Detroit? I think it's just really cool that, like, you know, I know, like, Zach Lowe and Bill Simmons and, like, a lot of other people just are on the league talk about how, like, Doc kind of messes up the role of playing, like, you know, GM and coach at the same time. And, like, and, like not only him, but, like, other coaches as well. The fact, I mean, you, you know, translate to football, like, Chip Kelly wanted that. And he, of course, you know, fudged up a lot of stuff for the right. Eagles this season um, by making really bad personnel decisions. But I think SVG, like, he's really self-aware and that he knows that, like, even though the league is changing, he's going to coach kind of with the same template that he's had where – you know, even when he was in Miami, he had Shaq, D Wade, and then a bunch of guys who could shoot around them. And then, and you know, Orlando, he had Dwight, a stretch four, a bunch of shooters, and a couple of decent guards like JJ and Jameer Nelson, stuff like that. Right. So I think he knows that he needs a big guy surrounded by like solid perimeter shooters and a guy who can really handle a ball and take on some leadership, which I think he has in Reggie Jackson. So mm-hmm. I think that's why he is doing better because a lot of the guys are trying to both switch the coaching mentality and the GM mentality, whereas SVG knows he needs like the coaching mentality to stay the same so he can just execute on one level for the GM stuff. Is SVG the coach of the year for you, or is there other options like Dwayne Casey in Toronto has done a good job, and you also have Steve Kerr slash Luke Walton vying for the joint head coach of the year, and there's You're always Greg someone. Popovich. Terry Stotts. Yeah, I was going to say Terry Stotts. There you go, coach. Portland, yeah. yeah. So yeah. any of those stand out, or is SVG uh, the main guy? I'd probably give it to the Steve Kerr, uh, Luke Walton joint. Okay. I don't. Yeah. I don't know how that would work, but right. yeah. co-coaches both lifted at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Coaches, yeah. I mean, put the trophy on. Do they ever figure out who gets those wins? Is it Luke Walton? No, it's, it's Steve Kerr. Kerr. Yeah. Steve Kerr. Yeah. Oh, it might change. They're saying it might change eventually, but at this point, it's Steve Kerr. Yeah, Luke is still at zero zero. Yep. Dude, I, I need to hire some people like that. I get all the credit for the retirement. Have a nice little break there, and then oh, I have a few more wins now. Yeah. yeah. So then another good coach that was a great coach last year is Budenholzer in Atlanta. What happened to the Hawks this season versus what was their success last year? What what did they mess up on, if anything? Uh, that you know? I mean, I think the Damari Carroll trade was a pretty big killer. He was such a large part of that team in both on offense and defense. I mm-hmm. I think he was that guy that they could match up on the opposing team's best player, and he would essentially shut them down and... Though they are still a good defensive team, he was also good in transition, and he added that element that they're kind of missing. Bazemore kind of tries to do that. He just doesn't do it quite as well. He better. And he's about to get a $15 million contract I don't, for what I don't, Zach Lowe said. So. I don't see that. I don't, I don't think he yeah. necessarily deserves that. But yeah. uh, additionally, I, I, the whole year last year, I, think the, I thought the Atlanta Hawks were overachieving, and I feel like they kind of proved that in the playoffs. So this year hasn't really come as a huge surprise to me. I think they're a... Solid team, well-coached team with a solid amount of talent who could make the playoffs and maybe win in the first round. Do you think that the right move is to fire butt? Because that's literally what every team, that's the pivot. It's like plan A and plan B if you draw a tree. Yeah. It's like if they if the team starts doing bad, like the Rockets started four and seven, mm. it was route A was keep Mikhail, route B was fired. What about then, blowing up the team? I know people talked the about team that. As well. so, guys. I don't think they should fire the coach. For the Hawks, you don't think they should? Yeah. Okay. Do you so think I should trade people? Yeah. Like is Horford, Horford, like the yes. core, like yeah. Horford, like no separate team? Yeah. I don't know. I really saw Horford in Boston. I thought that trade was going to happen over the... Boston every Over trade. the... Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> the moment was supposed to be a Boston. Exactly. Yeah, no, it's, Boston is the 
I mean, Boston's a great team there, up and coming, yeah. and they could use that last final piece. But I really, I think Horford's gone as soon final as possible. Piece for what? <laughs> they're good. They're the yeah. Priest. Boston's they're the final piece for getting to the second round and losing. <laughs> True. Yeah, you gotta try. You can't just Boston's you can't good, you can't concede to the Cavs. And the, Boston's and the got some good young players, like you know the yeah. core. Of they're like not gonna Thomas win like, now, but I mean, think about with Thomas and even Solinger now is playing. Crowder. Crowder, Avery Bradley, Bradley, Bradley going maybe the best court. on-ball defender like, in the, the most NBA. amazing mm-hmm. thing in the world. <laughs> Matt knows. I, I, we we talked about this, yeah. <laughs> it's amazing to see him yeah. glide down the court like, at all 295. That, that yeah. has, and he moves like a gazelle. Yeah. It's the most odd thing I've ever seen on a basketball court. And there's a lot of odd things that happen. Yeah. Like Jason Kidd saying, hit me, hit me with the water top. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Jared Sullinger is like at the top of that list. But go ahead, I just I think that would have been a nice piece for them to have. I think I think they will contend soon. I, I mean. But you guys really think the Hawks should trade? I mean, those guys aren't that old. I, I think that's just Horford. Attention. I don't think they should. Give but up. Horford, like Horford's thirty, and like everyone's like saying like, oh, the injury concerns. But he hasn't gotten the same injury since two years ago. Sure. Like, like he's been healthy for a while. I don't necessarily think they should do either of those options. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the fire injuries the that. Or- I don't more. think they should fire their coach. Yeah. yeah I and of the other injuries coach. that Al has had, they're like torn pectoral muscles is what Zach yeah. Lowe was saying. So that's not like, it's not end-all, be-all. No, if yeah. you need to trade him, you can. But mm-hmm. for he doesn't have any knee issues or anything like that. He's a solid rebounder. He can have like the post moves and everything. And now he has that weird jump shot that <laughs> I was going to say, so, I think the other can thing we talk that about, about was Corver though. He hasn't that's been true. as good this season. Like, Corver yeah. has not been, like, as effective from three or just, like, as mobile. People learn how to guard him. And his also yeah. his, I think he had surgery in the offseason. He's still having to relearn his shooting form. And he said a few months ago that that was a real problem, but he was making progress. So who knows? Maybe by the playoff time, he's back shooting 42% from three and mm-hmm. killing defenses. So we talked about Boston, but mm-hmm. let's move to Toronto where you have Kyle Lowry putting up 43-point nights and you have DeMar DeRozan who had 34 last night. So both of those guys are contributing, but what's Toronto's uh, pitfall in a way? What have you seen that's not been too impressive enough? For yeah. You? So I actually really like Toronto this year. Like I, I think Toronto's more legit than they have been in the past. I think they've got like some bad matchups like where the small ball lineups kind of kill them. To some extent, but I think because they have Damari Carroll, hopefully he comes back in time. And they've also, like, they've just gotten better at utilizing other guys. Like, they thought Terrence Ross was supposed to be kind of like that third or fourth, like, best player on the team, but I don't think that's necessarily his role. But off the bench, he's, like, played really well and kind of done what Lou Williams did for them a couple of seasons ago, but maybe even more efficiently with not taking as many, like, out of offense and out of rhythm shots. Mm-hmm. And so I think the thing is, if they can get someone like Carroll to actually play the, the small ball four effectively instead of Luis Scola, like, they're in good shape. And I think... As much as the Cavs are probably definitely better than them as a team, I don't, like, when I watch the Cavs, I don't think of them as invincible. Like, I, right. I, I definitely do think they have holes where they can, you know, be beat because they, one, don't know how to use Kevin Love, and I think their best lineup is switching, you know, Caleb to the five, LeBron to the four, and then mm-hmm. play either a combination of Shumper or some other wings as three and two, and then Kyrie at the one. But even that lineup, like, what I think is probably their most effective lineup at beating most teams, maybe outside the Warriors, is, like... It's got defensive holes, right? Because right. Kevin Love and Kyrie are not really good defensive players in their position. So I do think that the Raptors in this current like setup can do a lot if they play the, the Cavs. I think they win at least two or three games in the playoffs. They're number two now. Do you see them breaking their – because they have a real issue when they get to the playoffs. They get, like, stonewalled, and they can't really get out of the first round. They get yeah. swept by the Wizards. Yeah. <laughs> right. Of all teams to get swept by, you could, you pick the Washington almost bullets. So yeah. uh, what's going on with Toronto? Do you think they have enough left in them to not only get the two seed or possibly the one seed, but then make it out of the first round? Because if they don't, Dwayne Casey's job's on the line. I mean, I definitely think they can make it out of the first round. I don't think they'll make the Eastern Conference Finals or anything like that. But Who do you think is going to make the Eastern Conference Finals? Because um, you have Cleveland, well, right, on yeah, one side. Yeah. So. And then the best team that's not the Raptors on the other side. Boston? Is Boston? Boston? I guess. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the East is so weak. I don't, I don't know. I, I, so I, think, weak, I, think so the East is, I think the East has gotten much better. I think, I think the it East has, is... Because, yeah. because even the Raptors have beaten a lot of like decent like Western Conference teams and convincingly. Like, they blew up yeah. Portland a couple nights ago. Like, yeah. you know, I, I think the Raptors can definitely make the Eastern Conference Finals. Like, I, I don't think it's... Oh, I think they can. Conference. I'm saying I don't think they will. See, yeah, I, I think they, they will. Can. I think they will. I, I, I think, I they, think will. they will. I yeah. think... I, I've, I've watched, a, actually, for some reason, a good amount of their games. And I really like the way they play. They, I mean, between the guard play is phenomenal. Yeah. And their defense, defense has been underrated. Say. Their like, defense yeah, has it's crazy. really, yeah. even without Carroll, they haven't had Carroll for, for almost the entire season. He mm-hmm. played, a, I believe, a game or two in, somewhere in there. Mm-hmm. But uh, 
they're such a good shutdown defensive team, and they can. I've been amazed by how Lowry can <laughs> shut down opposing uh, point guards, and even DeRozan's yeah. playing very well. Yeah. So what do you guys think of James Johnson? I would love to see them get the Wizards in the first round. Wizards aren't gonna. Wizards are like the twelve seed. They're not gonna be in the playoffs. They might make the playoffs. I would uh, write them off. They're gonna have to knock the Hornets out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I would. What a task <laughs> that is. <laughs> Hey, no. <laughs> I don't know. The as I wear the Hornets sweatshirt, the, the Hornets are good. So I'm good. I mean, they're they're, they're solid. Solid. We are solid. Yeah, they're, they're Michael Jordan good. is the leader. I mean, so so the real interesting thing though is like I think the bottom of the East. If you look at all the teams that are like vying for those last spots, like there's some pretty good teams like yeah. Miami, the Bulls, the Pacers, the Hornets, the the Wizards. Like right. those are all you know like, like like those are teams in the past couple of years that have done. Like some damage in the playoffs, and they're all like on the brink of possibly not making the playoffs in some combination of two or three of them. I'm telling you, the Wizards are going to get the seven seed, and they're going to be so happy. Because they have Marquise Morris. They have Marquise Morris. They they have, how many games they, until he gets a swing? Well, they also can't stay healthy, and they've been sweet. really inconsistent. Like, Brad, like Bradley Beal. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he will go three points, 23 points. Brad, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Bradley Beal cannot stay healthy Raptor, for like more than five games. The Wizards will be favored in a series against oh the Raptors. God. Nah. <laughs> no. <laughs> they will. No. All of Toronto is preparing to send Justin hate mail. So Drake, ready will, for that. Drake will personally contact ever since, Justin. Ever since Masai Ujiri came out and said F Brooklyn, they've sucked. Remember <laughs> that? Remember that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I can. Yeah. So I what, don't know. what? Is it Daisy and Beyonce throwing the curse on Toronto? Like, I don't the Illuminati. <laughs> we here. <laughs> Exactly. So what what is it going on? I, I don't really see the Washington team doing anything, right? They barely get, kept up with the. Sixers. I, I, I would I would say Miami is way more of a threat to get in the playoffs yeah. and do have two. They got Joe Johnson as well. Uh, Especially the Wizards Boston's are the Raptors. This yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the Wizards will beat the Raptors. Yeah. The, 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 the Wizards don't even have their interior guys like they did last year where they had Gortat yeah. and Nene, and that was kind of one of the big mismatches they had against the Raptors. Well, you, you just said the Raptors are vulnerable to small ball lineups. But the, the, the Wizards' small ball lineup hasn't been as good as we thought it's it was going good. to be. Like it's actually been their worst. It, 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 it's been their worst lineup. Like, that's Kelly Oubre Jr. <laughs> what are you naming Dave's? Otto Porter Jr. Otto Porter Jr. I mean, Mr. Like irrelevant. I will play for five minutes, get hurt, and finally come back. In 2019. <laughs> Yeah, because everyone in the Western Conference has died <laughs> to open the door. Katie for comes to the Wizards. <laughs> so does Steph. No. Wait, so let's talk about the Wizards. Why do you want all that success for them? Is it the hometown factor? Do you want to see them go to the White oh, House I, for once? I was just... I, I, I was just... You're just hating on Toronto, no, aren't you? I mean, Toronto... <laughs> I'm tired of hearing about Toronto. They don't do anything I in the want to see. I would they like to... See, all -star, like, they weekend. have to... They haven't made a mistake. <laughs> because that... other players got to play in Toronto for once. <laughs> oh my god. Are you like anti-Canadian now? No, my, one, of my, one of my best friends is from Toronto. He keeps telling me, oh, the Raptors are going to be so good this year. Nope. So this is all directed to that friend that we don't know. How do you feel, friend? <laughs> no, I'm tired. Yeah, for inspiring all of this hate. Until LeBron loses in the Eastern Conference playoffs. Sometime. Which could be this year. Uh, it's not going to be this year, are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> Until he loses, I don't want to talk about the Eastern Conference during the regular season. I, I don't know. I don't know if you can, you can make that statement. Like, like the Cavs have been good, but they definitely don't know what the hell they're doing at some point. Oh, like sure. Stuff, I mean, like. but they could... I don't know. He could... Trust me. They're not... They, they're not. <laughs> they're going to lose like one game. I think I think over finals. a seven-game series, the Cavs are probably a better team. But yeah, I, I see Toronto I really keeping it close, and I see them making the Eastern Conference Finals. I mean, they're well-coached. They have a very solid team. They haven't done anything to indicate this season – that they're about to blow up. And, yeah, and, and it's, it's also the fact that, like, you know, they're not making DeMar DeRozan do stupid stuff, yeah. like take a bunch of threes. Like, he's actually driving second most of the best yeah. in the league. Like, they're taking advantage of strengths, which I think, you know, we talk about with Cleveland, like, they don't do. Like, they, they play, like, their, their shitty lineups when they're yeah. not supposed to. It's they're not playing to their strengths most of the nights. And so when you're in the playoffs, but do you think that with Ty Lue now as their coach, they're going to figure out <laughs> that set is never as right well? Repeat that statement and then, then ask me it again, you know. Okay. With, with Ty Lue as their coach, do you think they're finally going to figure it out? Because there's been evidence of coaches that, like, Portland figured out, hey, let's build this thing around Damian. Yeah, Lewis. but they have a good coach. Terry Stotts is actually a coach. solid coach. You're not like, bothered like, Ty Lue? He got stepped over by Iverson. I think that's more than the first half. 
David Black, I kicked out because he kept talking about how good of a coach he was in Europe, so the team hated him. Right. You know, he's like, you know what, in that. Europe, I like... I don't buy that theory. But why else would they just get rid of him in the middle of the season? He had a really solid stupid. record. Like, LeBron, the GM. NBA executives are so stupid. Are you sure it was, like, David Griffin? He was the guy who picked Black. Why would he just see he that he made a bad decision? He was the guy who got rid of him. That, that was what happened. I don't know. I don't know if I would go with that story. Oh, line. he was interviewed. He said, I made the decision. <laughs> Yeah, yeah he can say that, but it, it, that's just a safe face for LeBron, who they have to keep happy because he's on these one year deals and he might just walk out any moment. So it's like, you know, for them, they've got to they've be a. GM LeBron controls his own fate. Yeah. So, more yeah. so than David Griffin controls his own fate. Yeah. So. Especially because they made, uh, I think David Griffin was one of those guys who wanted to be a GM, like someone was mentioning, because he's like got connections in the media and yeah. stuff. Yeah. So, that's funny. <laughs> What do you guys make of Kobe Bryant's retirement tour? It started at the All Star game. Right? <laughs> <laughs> People are More like, like started like in oh, October. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, true. But it fully like swung into the full head of steam that it has yeah. now, where Kobe doesn't play any LA games. Ask Ask D'Angelo Russell. If that's yeah. the real question. Ask <laughs> D'Angelo Russell what he thinks about Kobe's retirement it's, tour. It's exactly. just funny to watch the one game that Kobe, or not the one game, but the most recent game that Kobe didn't play it was easily their best team game I've seen in a while. I mean, <laughs> yeah. It, Russell put up 39 points and he just it gave it and Clarkson played well it gave everyone more freedom to do what they actually would do rather than kind of give it to Black Hole Kobe and pull up from like 21 feet just inside the three point line and probably miss and just yeah it, it, he's not close to efficient and he is not good for the team right now but I love watching him because it's Kobe and yeah you remember that 538 the ball more Oh my god. I need to give them the ball more. <laughs> Why did you say that? So, so they lose their pick? Can, pick to the Sixers? They can keep losing games. Like, it, it'll be. Wait. Oh, they. Because their, their pick, I think if it's outside the top three, goes to the Sixers because they made that oh. really stupid trade. Wait, so, why <laughs> were they losing more? So, they have a higher chance of staying within the top three. Yeah. Oh. Because they win more games. Yeah, it's top yeah. three protected. So. Yeah. It's, so they should lose more, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah theoretically, they keep the pick, but at the same time, they should let <laughs> guys who are good play. Let them chase more records. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't think even if they do let guys that are better play more, that they're going to win a lot of games. They're still a very raw team. They're not great. I mean, mm-hmm. I think they can have a good mix of Kobe plus Russell plus Clarkson without winning enough games to move outside the top three picks. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe this is a question. So this is kind of like off the whole, like remember when like 530 had the mellow model of like all the player projections for all the guys getting drafted? They said yeah. D'Angelo Russell both projected as the highest possible like, you know, like superstar level player and then also the guy who had the highest chance of being a bust. <laughs> and so like that was one ironic and I think there, has been, what's up? Their projection system for drafting wasn't the best. Though. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm not saying by, I, that but I put too much it, weight. It has nothing it. to do with the players themselves. Yeah, I, like, I, I think it was more like... It was like, just like, their heights and yeah. like yeah. their draft position. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. But I, I do I do think like like one of the interesting things that I've thought about like over the season, like even though like the Warriors have kind of swallowed up every headline, is like what is the like current best young core that hasn't reached their full potential in the NBA? So like right, like like what is the current team that has a bunch of good young players but hasn't gotten to like multiple playoff runs where they've done anything of value so far with that exact team that they currently have right now? The Wizards. So, you really think it's the Wizards? I mean, they I have mean, a good young core. They have Kelly Oubre Jr. <laughs> that yeah, helps. got him. I don't know. What about what, 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 what your thoughts? Otto Porter. What about your thoughts? Yeah, best best young core. Best young core, I would say, is Minnesota, actually. Because if all of those guys can figure it all out, you have Wiggins, you have Levine, who is Downs. amazing, actually, and he comes off the bench. And Levine, I think, if Minnesota's not careful, they could get into a situation that OKC had where they Harden was... James Harden. Yeah, like yeah, Harden was clearly <laughs> superior, didn't deserve to be sixth man, although in theory it kind of helped them out that he was coming off the bench providing energy so that Russ and KD could switch in and out of the lineup. He's made a huge jump this year. He couldn't even he shoot has. last yeah. year. Now yeah. he can actually like, hit shots. At least one two straight dunk contest. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> it changed the game. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I agree with you. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say Boston. I think Boston has a great young core. They're a little bit... They're, they're kind of on that upper tier of the youth but they have yeah. enough of them that I really think they are again they're already proving themselves this season but with Brad Stevens at the helm I think they are destined for numerous good seasons and I agree with you on Minnesota though I with Towns Wiggins Levine yeah. it's I mean that numerous good season is a little bit relative if you're talking to Justin because he thinks the Wizards are going to rule the planet in like yeah. the next by 2019 <laughs> but uh they, will. Well. With, uh, they might they might Steph and KD 
Yeah. <laughs> Steph somehow also becomes a wizard. Steph goes to the Hornets <laughs> before he goes to the Wizards. <laughs> no. I, <laughs> Why would anyone go to the Hornets? Because he's from <laughs> here. He's from Charlotte. Oh, true. It's the same Why argument. Why would KD go to the Why would anyone come back to Charlotte? Charlotte is the greatest. <laughs> I think I think it's uh, for me. I think I would pick a combination of either like uh, Minnesota, definitely like for the reasons you said it. But I think another one is um, you know Indiana with the fact that Paul George is still like only freaking like what like twenty five. Like, yeah, he's still really young. Yeah. Like and the fact that they've got a couple of good players around him that are getting like even Iamimi, like who we thought was like useless, has actually Jan, Jan, Jan. <laughs> Jan. Useless, but he doesn't. Useless with a different no, name too. Exactly. Yeah, Miles Mahini, Turner. Miles Turner, and yeah. like, and they're they're actually pretty good at drafting. Usually, like Larry Bird in their front office does a good job picking players. So I think they're a good young core. I also like Detroit for similar reasons as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. What do you guys make of the Phoenix Suns? Because we all <laughs> saw Charles Barkley's like Phoenix Suns, <laughs> terrible T R B L. So what do you guys make of the Suns? You They're ask just... this every podcast. <laughs> I know. Still like five in a row. Like, they suck. They're a disaster. <laughs> yes, but Tier does not uh, doesn't know the podcast. I, 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 think, so. I think the greatest move of the season was giving up. The, the the Lakers they they should have taken the Lakers pick and not taken Brendan Knight to give him like an eighty yeah. million dollar contract, but yeah I think they just made a lot of weird personnel moves like I, I don't know why you would promise Markeith and uh you know, you know like the the Morai twins that they could stay together and then be like no Morai fuck you guys <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then like just <laughs> just have like just trade you one just when you need to that. Arbitrarily remove no, 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 no. Morai as in Morris multiple. Oh, oh, I thought it was no. Colbert, Colbert. That kind of <laughs> Morai. I like it. Uh, but yeah, I mean that, and then also like the you know you have Dragic, Thomas, and Bledsoe, which in the first place you shouldn't have signed Isaiah Thomas probably even if he had value. But then you trade you know both Thomas and Dragic, and you probably should have kept one of them. Right. Um, and so, yeah, I don't know, a lot of bad moves to go around. And then firing Hornacek as well was not good. Yeah. Because Earl Thomas, Earl White. Earl Watson. Earl Watson. Earl Thomas. Earl I did Earl Thomas. Basically, I named all the Earls and I still don't know. He's the safety. He's the safety for Seattle. Seattle. <laughs> 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 He's, <laughs> He's now the coach of the Phoenix Suns. Hey, uh, that would be a better move. That way, I mean, it's... I think it's possible. Because Earl Watson, before you go, sure. um, Earl Watson does the weird lineup things. Like one time he had Alex Len coming off the bench and the guy put up like 19 and 13, like 19 points, 13 mm-hmm. rebounds. The next second he has him in the starting lineup and the minutes decline. So he's kind of like Scott Skiles. We have no <laughs> idea what he's going to put out. <laughs> But what do you make what of your sons? What you're referring to is one of the more frustrating nights. I played him in FanDuel that night because he had like 45 FanDuel points yeah. in like 24 minutes. So it's great. Yeah. And the next game, he starts. So it's, you think, oh, great, he'll get the minutes. Mm-hmm. He plays this like se- Watson, we're 17 about. minutes, and I don't think he even had a foul. So it's not like he was in foul yeah. trouble. But that's the type of moves the Suns management makes. I think, I think more like confusing than the Suns is how is Dallas not like – Garbage. Like, how are they not horrible? Like, I thought they were gonna be one of the worst teams. The, in the spirit West of Mark Cuban. Like, I, I, yeah. I just don't understand yeah. how they're like, like even you know, in playoff contention, let alone like actually. They have spot. a lot of like nitty gritty guys. I don't know if you've seen that. I'm trying to write a piece on them, so I had mm-hmm. to watch like all four of their last few games. And they have this guy named Salam Medjuri. He's yeah. like seven footer, mm-hmm. and he blocks like every shot. He's basically like Enos Cantor, but fifteen million dollars less at cost. So and this actually is plays amazing. defense. And plays he defense, plays yeah. defense. So like Dirk doesn't play any defense, and uh, understandably so. <laughs> And then David Lee just like risen out of the dead from Boston <laughs> to Dallas. So what like, position are they in now? They're sixth, I believe. They're in the playoffs. They gotta get the eight. <laughs> so they can knock off Golden State. State. Yeah. They knock off Golden State. I, I, I think I think they would have a much back, harder time playing back Golden for State than any of those other teams. Yeah, yeah. I am back for two thousand eight <laughs> when Golden State ruined their. And it's a completely season. different team, right? Yeah. Speaking of Dallas, what I've loved is the resurgence of Raymond Felton. I mean, these. Are- Former, former <laughs> those, UNC those guard. Those four words have I know, I never thought I'd say that. Oh, but man. he's actually not that bad. If you watch games, he's pretty efficient. He's not a bad... He actually adds to the team rather than yeah. takes away, which is shocking, honestly. And he hasn't but, gotten a DUI and he's, yet. And he's, <laughs> and he's better than Ty Lawson, the other UNC. Yeah, what is he with these, like, point guards coming out of UNC and getting these, like, trouble with the law? Like, hey, Ken, Kendall just got hurt. He didn't get in trouble with the law. He just got hurt. No, but you know, Ty PJ Lawson. Harrison, the... Shooting guard, small forward, getting yeah. in trouble, and come on, Roy Williams, <laughs> that guy boys. Fats Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> what a name! Wait, what? We had a guy named Fats Thomas. <laughs> no, that was the, 
was the guy that PJ Harris oh. got <laughs> cars from. I mean, where were UNC students? So we <laughs> yeah, didn't didn't he know. trade cars with Josh Gordon or something? Some he probably shit like did. that. Yeah. Probably. Yeah, free yeah, PJ. But now, <laughs> but pre, uh, PJ is freed in Memphis now. So when you guys make a Memphis, this provides the perfect segue. Wait, he's on Memphis. He now? is. Yeah. <laughs> he came over in a Courtney. Is this good trade. or bad? <laughs> I don't care at all. Okay. <laughs> he's putting like fifty points a game for Since, those, all threes. But wait, like, would he have been a senior this year? Nah, I no, think he would have graduated last been. year as a senior. Okay. Yeah. If Since, we had him this year, though, like seriously, if we had Tokato. He's would have been worse. I know. I say if, if we had <laughs> no Tokido would add yeah, some depth to our team. Tokido could have shoot. That was he, his problem. Yeah. But he could dunk oh, and he man. could pass occasionally. Do you guys yeah. remember the Duke game last year where we had the ball down two with like ten <laughs> seconds left and Tokido took a long two? <laughs> I remember that, that was, shit. I was that like, was so mad. I was like, why? <laughs> this is, by the way, this is exactly what Dion Waiters does every time Westbrook gives him the ball at the three point line. He takes a dribble in and goes like two feet inside the three. And then I, I, you know, I'm really surprised. Like, like Russ hasn't actually like murdered like the yeah, waiters yet. Why is he so horrible? Like, he's good. Like, <laughs> it's because he just yeah. doesn't have any sort of like shot selection at all. No, the funny part it's, is uh, the uh, the Thunder played in Cleveland a couple of nights ago, and people are like, "This is the night Deion Waiters throws down the hammer on Cleveland." <laughs> 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 he got destroyed, and he shows them what they were missing all along. And then at the end of the day, the score of like zero point two, <laughs> and then everyone's like. Yeah, now we know what Cleveland was missing. Nothing. <laughs> remember, remember when Deion Waiters thought that he should get more like time and press than Kyrie? Yeah. <laughs> that was hilarious. So there was an like, actual beef going yeah. on. <laughs> it was so funny. That was, it was like, terrible. Yeah. <laughs> You're a Cleveland fan. Why do you think Kyrie's terrible? I'm a LeBron fan. <laughs> Kyrie's ruining it for him. He goes where uh, LeBron goes in America. He goes where LeBron goes. <laughs> where, where he's at, fam. Where he's oh, at. No. It's like, oh, it's where's LeBron at? for a team in the NBA. Like, half the years, they're irrelevant. Do you, that, that's when you show your fanhood. You be yeah, a good see, fan. Yeah, I mean, also, so I don't necessarily it's just agree a waste with that. Of time. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I like the way I see it is. I mean, I I relate this to the Panthers. I've been the world's largest Panthers fan for fifteen years now, and I've it makes it so much sweeter. I know we lost in the Super Bowl, and I was d- devastated, but it makes it so much sweeter actually watching them win when you have a team and you follow them and they suck and they suck and they suck and they get a little better and then. They keep good. sucking. And then they keep what sucking. happens with most teams. <laughs> like seventy sixers, just especially with the Sacramento Kings. Yeah. Oh man, you can never get out of purgatory. So let's talk about Vivek, our favorite Indian. <laughs> Tier, you're Indian. I'm Indian. These <laughs> guys are white, so they're excluded from this conversation. But what do you make of Wow? <laughs> well, we can lay down the hammer on Vivek. You just uh, reverse trumped us. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> God damn it! Don't you dare bring that shit up. <laughs> Oh, no, but seriously, no. you guys can get to it, obviously. Uh, but what do you make of what I mean, I don't know. He, I, I think he's just like we've everyone knows a bad owner. And like, I yeah. think, I don't know, like, like I that's, I mean, he hired Vladi Divac, who didn't even know like any of the rules, like of being a GM, and was like, I don't know how to do like the salary cap and the stretch provision, all the shit. And like, he had to ask for help and made, like, Wait, he he's gave a, a GM? Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. He, yeah. he, he, <laughs> gave, he gave away Nick Stauskas literally for free because yeah. he didn't know what to do. He cleared cap space for Wesley Matthews before he actually signed. <laughs> Thinking he was going to sign, uh, <laughs> like he didn't know that you could get him to agree and then clear the cap right. space. But you know, <laughs> or you so, can always pull a DeAndre like, and just leave. Just, just lost. I mean, even then, you spent like you know, like a, a number eight, number nine pick on him. You should probably want to keep him or get something. They literally gave him away for free. There's like, yeah, yeah, there's literally there's nothing worth. You, you gave him for nothing. You might as well have a rotation player. Yeah, He's probably better than Macklemore. Macklemore. I mean, like you guys yeah. remember. Sorry, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> the play. Yeah, in that one playoffs where Vlade Divac batted the ball back to, <laughs> to Robert Ori for the game. Yeah. Winning shot. <laughs> But, but while while he's that great on a basketball court, he really doesn't know the GM position. I think I told Matt about this. Like, there's a, a trade that they're trying to execute with the Kings, and so Vladi like executes the trade at the last possible minute, of course, and then he forgets to send the league a fax saying, "Hey, we've traded these two guys or whatever." So he sends the fax to like Boston, for instance, that that's where the trade is happening. I think it was the Isaiah Thomas trade actually. 
And so, uh, I might be blanking on it, but whatever. But, like, there's a trade that Vladi was a part of, and he forgot to tell the league, so that nice. nullified the trade. Is he Manchester this United? This is a guy, yeah. <laughs> yeah, basically Manchester he United. He still uses fax machines. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's... Like you said, they haven't gotten to the technology world because with the all-star voting, they're using a Microsoft Word document. So basically, <laughs> <laughs> we can't put anything past the league. So, so he, here's, here's another question. If you had to expand uh, two NBA teams to new cities, which two cities would you pick? Uh, are we adding teams or are we taking teams? Adding teams. Adding like teams. taking the Wizards. Putting adding them. teams. Okay. Adding teams. Let's see. So... Kansas City would be an option. LA has no. LA has NBA covered. Yeah, <laughs> 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 I'd like to work there. You want three NBA franchises? Uh, <laughs> half courts that go like yeah, <laughs> two different ways. So then, and and watch them both the same time. No, but then just like the Clippers, they change out the little like photos of like Austin Rivers and Lance Stevenson, and then they put up like the other team stars. But, uh, no, I think Kansas City is a good option because they have a football team and they're a really yeah. nice sports town. I think, from what I've heard, everyone that goes to Arrowhead to watch a football game, they end up absolutely loving it. And then the Royals have done superbly in MLB. So they're the small town team that everyone counts out, <clears throat> even with the Chiefs, and they end up winning somehow. So I think that culture would be really great for a team like <clears throat> anyone that's coming into Kansas City to have. Uh, like, Charlotte never really had that. So when they got the Bobcats, like the winning or the tradition of crappiness continued because they had the one Super Bowl season and mm-hmm. they had a few miraculous years with the Panthers, mm-hmm. but they were really like the only professional team and the atmosphere collectively mm-hmm. in the city wasn't one of winning. It was more of like abysmal. So yeah. with Kansas City, I think that can fix the issue. But Matt, what city would you suggest? I'd bring back the Supersonics. I think Seattle, Seattle yeah. would be a really fun city. I mean, they've got a really nice, as much as I hate them, fan base in Seattle for the NFL and... Oh, yeah. they, the fans. Why do you hate Seattle? <laughs> Why would I not hate Seattle? They, it's they, the Panther Seahawks thing. In, in that They're in and different divisions. <laughs> they are no, but the, the same weird conference. now the huge rivals. Yeah, they have to go through Seattle to get to this. Pretty much, it's going it's going to be Panthers Seattle a lot in the NFC now. Yeah, but uh, I don't think the Panthers are going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> You're crushing people's dreams right now, man. I have a lot of reasons one to argue one, that, but only advancing <laughs> is. <laughs> But, but yeah, uh, yeah, I, I think Seattle will be fun. They, I mean, after they moved <laughs> to schedule. Oklahoma City, the Sweet. fans have been missing them. I read an article the other day, like, please bring back the Supersonics. <laughs> Did they play the AFC South and the NFC? Yo, uh, this is an NBA podcast. <laughs> Keep it on track, yo. Come on, Justin. Talk about that stuff in Michigan. We don't okay. need all that up over here. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Not really, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I think okay. that... I think... Um, Oakland. Now that now that the Warriors are moving out, they are um, to the Chase Center. Yeah, yeah. They're gone. Aren't they moving to like downtown San Francisco? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think Oakland would be a good option. So you would you take Oakland over San Diego? Because like even like the Bay Area's got at least like one basketball team, and then Sacramento's decently close. But like like San Diego's kind of separate compared to LA, even though it's all SoCal. But would you take that or? I don't know. I haven't done enough research into this. Do people watch sports in San Diego? I don't That's think so. Question. I mean, the Chargers, they, 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 don't, they have no games. fans. Just, and I put a team in Detroit. Like, actual <laughs> Detroit. Not, not, oh, like, <laughs> not, like, not like Grand Rapids, like Grand Rapids Michigan. Yeah, in the outside. Palace of Auburn Hills. Yeah. No more Auburn, <laughs> Auburn Hills Pistons. We want a real Detroit. They have all these videos that are like, we're such a hard-working city. And it's like... You're like an hour away from here. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah. Are no, you, no, the no. Red Wings actually in Detroit, right? They play in the same place, right? No. No? This they is play in the Joe Arena. Lewis Arena. Yeah. I, I think that's in they're, downtown. They're either moving downtown and they're currently... I think they're downtown now and they're moving, they're moving away. Out. Yeah. yeah. It nice. sucks. And the Tigers are Comerica? Where's that? In the city? That's in the city. Okay. Comerica and Ford Field are right next to each other. Oh, right. The Lions as well. Yeah. I was going to say, so for the two cities, of course, the Sonics are the obvious choice because they've like actually won an NBA title and shouldn't have like a real fan base before. Yeah. Um, but then the second city, I think, would be St. Louis because they lost the Rams to mm-hmm. L.A. I think there's like a, 
a gap of like people yeah. like who are like, oh, we have like one less major sports team now. All we have is the Cardinals and the Blues, um, which you know hockey is kind of like, yeah, like who the fuck really, you know? Hey, it, we it, like hockey. We we, we we might like hockey, they like but, the but Blues a lot. Though. They they yeah. do, but even then, in terms of just like relevance on a national scale, sure. hockey is the fourth like by far, like yeah. not even close, like in terms of like sports uh, that we watch. And so like I think basketball would fill in that gap. I wish hockey was bigger. Yeah, do you though? It's really fun to watch live. Not on yeah. TV necessarily. But we've hockey. talked about this before. Hockey's got some crazy people who are hockey fans. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm not. But I like hockey fans. <laughs> like, also, I wish you Dustin might piss off even more Canadians by that. <laughs> so we don't need to go there. And just don't insult Canada, man. That's my heritage. Shut just the hell. Up. That's true. <laughs> what? <laughs> some of my heritage is from Canada. Oh okay. Well, those what, like one tenth of one percent. <laughs> oh, like my grandma. Oh, oh okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. I well, now you tell us after we like ridiculed you. I just team. want. I I don't really care about hockey, but the Caps are doing well this year. So ah, so the truth comes out because I was like, you don't actually give a shit about hockey. To be fair, real. to the be Caps fair. are more dominant than the Warriors. That is that is true. They yeah, sports yeah. center ran a special on this the other yeah. day. That's true what I was fact. gonna say. Justin shared that article immediately. Like the second oh, really? it was written by I the don't Washington Post, at all. I saw Justin. <laughs> 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 this guy's like, you know, actually in real in, in real life, I don't really. I mean, if you see the Warriors, they're definitely more dominant. <laughs> 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 it's so People are just trying to make a point and try to get an extra story out of it because there's nothing to talk about anymore. Can I do you think that? Downs the Warriors. I'm, I'm down for it. Can I bring up one other kind of funny thing I saw the other day? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. There was some, I don't know what this was. Someone shared it as like, are you serious? You can't make this compar- comparison. But it was some sporting article website ran a thing. It was like, Steph Curry's season is the equivalent of hitting 128 home runs, I think. From Mike Trout, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, like... Yeah, there's the name attached to yeah, it, but yeah. But... So it's just not a. It's not a. It's not the same. It's yeah. not a comparison. Like Steph has complete destiny over where that Exa- shot exactly. Goes. Whereas there's Crowd so is much like dependent on a pitcher. There's pitching a pitch. The right there's ball. so many added variables that they're not yeah. taking into account. That's just there's no way to make that. Yeah. An actual comparison. So how about we actually do some real journalism <laughs> yeah. when we talk about the Warriors because everybody else has lost their yeah. mind. But uh, going to the uh, Orlando Magic, what do you guys make of Eric Gordon? <laughs> Why? You're a C- do you still want to talk about Canada? What a random team to pick. <laughs> I like well, it. Well, like yeah, we both like the Magic. Yeah. And I'm surprised you said he likes the Magic. Because I've always Bulls, liked the Magic. Your Bulls lost by like 30 to I mean, listen, <laughs> listen, listen. <laughs> I, 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 want, I want the Bulls to reset. So the more we oh, lose, okay. the more forces okay. the hand in the front Class, office. I don't really care. He's been saying this for years. <laughs> they're, <laughs> off, they're off 2 1 on the Cavs last year. And I'm, I'm like, like are you happy? And he's like, nah, I want them to lose. <laughs> well, because I knew we weren't going to actually win the, the NBA title. I, like, that's all I would you care about as a fan. No, we wouldn't have. Because I knew we weren't going to win that series. I knew we weren't going to beat the Western Conference team. Like, you know, like you have to be realistic. You like, would have won like, the Easter Conference if you had even if that's the case. We would have gotten smashed by either the Warriors, the Thunder, the Clippers, the Spurs, anyone, any four of the teams we would have lost I to. I don't know about that. I mean, this team was kind of built with the idea that Derrick Rose would go back to being like his actual good self, which he hasn't. So, like that, you know, you can't have that team be the same team and expect to get to the same place you want to go. Yeah, I think they need to cut cut ties with Derrick Rose and make Jimmy Butler the. Focal point, even though it's already basically. Happened. I mean, it's right, kind of yeah. happened. And Derek Rose is just kind of hanging on by a thread, but it actually just needs to happen because that'll free up Butler a little bit more on offense, and everyone will kind of recognize him as the undisputed leader. Whereas Rose has been there longer; he used to be the leader. Who do you look to? Who still? I got a question. <laughs> Who still buys Derek Rose stuff? Derek Rose, <laughs> <laughs> like, like the Derek Rose brand. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I still know, but I have shoes that are Derek Yeah, I, 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 I have a jersey. They should shoes. just change it to Jimmy Butler. Like, <laughs> I'm not sure that's he's, quite he's, he's Jordan, though. He's Jordan Jordan their contract. You can't get rid of the three Adidas stripes just like that. Because <laughs> Jimmy's Jordan, isn't he? Yeah, he's, he's yeah. Jordan. Yeah. See? Like that Adidas signs athletes that just go down the tubes. Like you no, they got Damian Lillard. Damian, I was about to say, Damian Lillard. That's the Lillard. cheapest contract they ever gave an yeah, athlete did, for $100 million. And James Harden. James Harden for two hundred million. That was a lot. Of he's money not gonna be good in like three years. I don't know. That. <laughs> don't know. He's really he's actually improved his game a lot this year. Apart from literally the zero effort on defense. He's so yeah, inefficient. Wait, he what? No, no, he's, 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 he's not. He's okay, not part efficient. Part of his inefficiency is because his team around him isn't yeah. all that good, so he does Where? have to take difficult yeah. shots. Like the shots that he takes and makes, some of them are like, okay, why did he take that? Yeah. But most of them are like, what? He took that. He shouldn't have, but he made it. 
Yeah, kind of like, yeah. kind of yeah. like, what's your better? You just option said most there. of his shots are like that. He doesn't even make because most of his shots. No, because the <laughs> offense that they have, like Beji, Beji, bigger stuff. What's his name? JB, JB, <laughs> Beji. <laughs> I'm telling you, yeah. James Harden will be irrelevant. In like two years. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm just, not gonna go that. I know, but either. JB doesn't like do the offense in any conceivable way than what Kevin McHale has. Yeah. And, and, and this is what I asked Matt last time. Do you think Harden wanted to kick Mikhail out? Because there's reports going around that he wanted to do that. I but can't believe they didn't like, trade Dwight. Like, Harden is... Yeah, what? so isn't Harden the most pissed off person on the planet right now? Because Dwight's still here. I and mean, this is also is, his fault, though. He came into like the season out of shape. He is an idiot. Har- Harden <laughs> is like one of the worst teammates in the entire <laughs> league. He gets everyone fired. <laughs> he, he asks for trades for half of his team. But Come just on. remember... Harden, what he makes this year, and given the production he has, you can pay Harden that much money and have him on your team, or you can pay that much money and more to Enos Kanter. Yeah. I think you'll take Harden. <laughs> Pretty yeah. sure. I yeah, I mean, I, 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 I would take Harden on my team any day. Like, He's a team a killer. Person. Also, I, I, th- I think that. I think Virage is very right on with the whole, you either have Harden taking slightly less than optimal shots or really bad shots from other people. I mean... They don't have a lot of offensive talent, honestly. Yeah. I mean, Howard is not the offensive player he once was. He's shooting 43%. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> on the field? That that's is actually, not efficient. That's not that bad for the amount yeah. of threes he takes. It's yeah. really like not that 38. bad. This is the guy who says that shooting 40% from three isn't good. I have standards <laughs> with three point shooters. <laughs> you only like the top five three point yeah. shooters in the league. <laughs> and JJ Redick. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't he one of them? Yeah, he is. He is. He has He's the like high, highest. He has the highest. He's averaging like what, like close to twenty a game, right? So Fun is Jared. Fact. Uh, so is uh, Jared Bayless as yeah. well. Yeah. Fun fact: uh, Fun JJ Redick has the highest true shooting percentage in the NBA. Yeah. Your boy. <laughs> Wait, is he really thought he went to Duke? I know. Oh, I hate it. No, him. he liked okay. Duke. That's why I thought I know, he listened I to our past podcast. Duke, like at the point. end, all three of us started talking about Duke. Like we were on good terms with them, and then uh, uh, let's just end the podcast. <laughs> Redick was my favorite player back then, so uh, yeah. I kind of. I mean, he's kind of. I mean, his podcast is pretty cool. He's a yeah. Have you guys listened to it? His podcast with uh, Yahoo. Wait, did you Redick? He runs a podcast. podcast? He's yeah. the first player in the NBA to have it. But Bro, how's he got time for this shit, man? He's got to focus on his damn defense. <laughs> All he does is shoot threes and play lackadaisical defense. Like, there's not much to focus on. Also, he, he did say on a podcast that Doc Rivers sometimes doesn't even have shoot arounds that are mandatory. Like, after practice. So he's like, most times I have to go in and, like, motivate myself to do 100 more shots or 400 shots. Like, this is not the way Doc Rivers coaches a team. So, there you go. Maybe but, that's why they're not that good. Maybe that's why they're underperforming a little bit. Yeah, so the last <laughs> thing is the Magic, and then who are going to be the most overpaid guys that are going to come out of this summer? Because I think <laughs> Tirth has a couple of ideas, so we'll do the Magic first. Uh, Matt, what do you make of them? Um, I think they're, I don't know if, how many people have watched many of their games, but they're really fun to watch. Yeah. They run, 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 play terrible defense, <laughs> take bad shots, but they're an exciting team. Oladipo... Or James Harden in the team. <laughs> Olad- <laughs> Oladipo should not be taking the volume of shots that he's taking. They don't really have a true point guard. Alfred Payton's not that good. But I love Aaron Gordon. He is fun to watch. He's going to be very good. Obviously, we all know him from the dunk contest. But he's actually very good inside. And he's one of those stretch fours that can... He's actually a pretty moderately good three-point shooter for a big guy. Yeah. And he stretches defenses and brings the big guys out of the paint, leaving the... Leaving the lane a little bit more open. Is he a future James? Oh, uh, not James. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> is, is he a future Blake Griffin in the making? To you? Um, he looks uh, like him. He's a mini Blake. That's what I always said I when was, he got drafted. I was yes. like, that's literally Blake Griffin, yeah. but and he had the body type like at age no, nineteen. No, I think he's gonna punch. <laughs> Stafford in the future. I wouldn't put him in that. Category. Maybe if he finished a second in another dunk contest, he should have yeah. won. But. No, I didn't watch the dunk contest. What? This is like the easily the best dunk contest in like 10 years. Yeah, probably. that's like the best bad food you can eat or something. That's <laughs> all Chinese food. The dunk contest is so boring. <laughs> okay, that's fair. So, I like the three-point contest. contest, contest, contest the I didn't watch it. I was watching the, I was watching the Republican <laughs> debate. Oh, okay. oh God. Wait, enough. what? The Republican? That's another podcast we gotta yeah. have. What? Dude, it was so entertaining. Oh, man. <laughs> but, uh... 
leaving politics aside and going to our last topic, Tirik, who do you think are the couple of guys in the league that are going to leave their teams and get overpaid because the cap is going to increase <clears throat> to like almost $90 million, $100 million, somewhere around that mark? Probably, uh, I mean, so like it's hard to say who's like considered underpaid, overpaid, especially because the cap is changing so quickly. Like, you know, what is the actual value? And also like the types of players that we used to think were like super like important are now like becoming less important and different guys are taking that space. Right. But I would say like Powell's probably going to get overpaid a shit ton because his numbers are still really good. But like being a Bulls fan, like his, although his numbers are good, he's kind of, they're kind of empty in the sense mm-hmm. of like, he'll like get a lot of great stats, but like you just don't see the value in terms of like it really opening up opportunities for the rest of the team. Yeah. Like there's not a bunch of double teams coming Powell's way. There's not a bunch of like offensive rebounds he's getting. Like, He's not really, like, a really solid shot blocker that changes directions, like, kind of, like, a radius around the hoop or anything. He's just kind of there at the basket. So, I'd say he'll probably get overpaid. But he's, he's still a good player, just not probably as good as his numbers show. Where do you think Powell ends up? Because I remember when he got courted by Chicago, <laughs> like, literally one of the things he said is, I like opera houses and cities that have them. <laughs> so, that lessens the demographic yeah, of where he could go. To, like, five cities. Right. Yeah. So, where is he going to go? Uh, I mean... <laughs> the Knicks? No, I mean, I think, uh, I don't think he'll end up the Knicks. Uh, the Knicks oh, the will... Wizards? No, not the Wizards. I, th- I think uh, there's, there's a good chance he ends up, I, I think uh, weirdly Portland might be a, like a weird oh. fit for him. He might like Portland. Um, I don't and see then... Portland overpaying for him. No. Yeah, that, that's, that's the thing. They won't have a background too. Um, also, Portland's average age is like 24.9 with Powell will be like 30. So no, they're what trying is your to... definition of overpaying here? You Tristan know? Thompson. Yeah, but also like Kent Bazemore is probably gonna yeah. get twelve to thirteen billion this year, and he's not that worthy of a player. But because well, the cap what goes makes up, them worthy? Because like, contribution if the cap, to the team. If the cap is going, do you have like some inherent value of a dollar that you think goes I mean, to? Think no, about but, a baseline like, salary for it, like an average player, and then compare the output of that player to so that average. Won't salary. that baseline salary <laughs> go up? Sure, it will. Yeah. No. Because in that sense, Gordon Hayward's like fifteen million dollar deal looks pretty cheap right yep. now with the Jazz, and the Hornets should have like yes, we should upped have. it, don't, but they didn't. Don't so kill them. <laughs> they're going to be losing to a Wizards for the next time, <laughs> nine, ten years. But uh, do you have any other guys that in mind? I was trying to think. I think Parsons is a free agent this year, isn't he? He is. Yeah. Uh, I saw him and Hayward are on Austin the same cycle. I saw yeah. a rumor. <laughs> he's become. He's become irrelevant. I saw a rumor that he might end up at the Magic, and if they want him, they're going to have to. The magic one? Or that's, the well, that's what I saw an article today that he might end up on the magic. <laughs> that's but, uh, yeah. I don't see him being worth anything close to what they would have to pay to get him. Yeah. So I would say Parsons. But is he the most important player on Dallas right now? No, no. no. Who no. is? Wesley Matthews is a person. Yeah, yeah he's, he's, he's really still yeah, recovering. If you've watched this little bit of progression through the last few weeks, he's really starting to get his stroke back after the injuries and become the player that he was at Portland last year. Wait, shut up. That took a long time. I, I didn't realize you said his name. We were talking about Dallas. I was like, man. Wow. Wait, who? He said DeAndre Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, DeAndre sends love from LA. <laughs> Talk Wait. about overpaid players. Yes. DeAndre Jordan. What about Blake? Talk about him. You mentioned him. <laughs> yeah. He's overpaid. Okay. He had a good performance good. last night. He's I mean, would you, would you give him or Enos Cantor a max? Mm-hmm. If you had to, no, you have to give one of them a max. Which one are you going to give it to? Only one of them. you got to give him a max. Oh, please I say quit. Enos. <laughs> you, you quit. <laughs> I quit. <laughs> you can't. you got to give it to DeAndre. Yeah. yeah he I tries. Guess. No, he no. no like, oh, man. No, GM, he saw the team. I get out of there because... Uh, Wait, you sell OKC to who? <laughs> there's not that many options that Seattle could take them back, but there's a lot right, of bad. Yo, I'll buy OKC. I've got OKC. all the money I wanted. Yeah. You know, I could take out a loan. <laughs> but while we're ahead, thank you guys for doing this, and let's <laughs> us also quit. Yeah. <laughs> I want to, one last note. Now you want to talk? <laughs> I'm going to listen to this in three years, and James Harden is going to be irrelevant. And the Warriors are going to be the 15. And... The East or the Wizards are going to be the fifteen. Sorry, <laughs> yeah. not the Warriors. Yeah, you can't get everything. Wait, what's want. the fifteen? The last seed. Oh, it's the worst. No way. No way. Either yeah. way, everyone remember to vote. It's important to vote. Damn it, please vote. 